welcome back to another episode of the Marriage and Real Estate Podcast. I am your host, Kevin Shelton, uh, missing my co-host this episode, but this episode is all about the men. Yeah. Uh, so this is our <laughs> Black Men Buy Homes episode, and I am uh, so excited to welcome our amazing guest, uh, as well as panelists for the event and host. I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves because I'm not going to do all that. Yeah. So we'll start off with Andre and then go around. Yes, yes. Hey, everyone. This is Andre Barra with Yes to Real Estate. Super excited to be here next to all the legends in the room. And we have great information for you today. So thank you. All right. Uh, my name is Chris Senegal. I'm a real estate investor. Specifically focused on social impact uh, work, specifically in our neighborhoods that are going through gentrification. Just happy to be a part of the panel. Tyron McDaniel from Houston, Texas with Houston Vintage Homes and Development. And just like my other brothers, excited about this event and being able to share information. I shouldn't even really be here. Uh, I'm a mentee. They are mentors. I'm just happy to be in the building to learn more. I'm so baby in the process of real estate, but I'll be official. I'm the Mad Hatter. Uh, used to be a host of a morning show. Now I'm just chilling. Got me a baby, having a great time with that. But actually operations manager over at KTSU, content director for The Vibe. And just happy to be here with all these accomplished brothers uh and that's the first thing that got him in trouble because he wanted to do something for the brothers and some people didn't like that <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people didn't like that so uh just jump straight in yeah I'm now, sorry. now i will say this and i'm i'm not like formal at all and half the time my podcast etiquette is not there so i'm just gonna be talking and y'all figure that out 100%. now now i call you tyrone all the time is 100%. it tyron or tyrone and i'm i answer to all of it i mean you know what i'm saying what's your mama call no uh it's tyron Ah, okay. So yeah. I'm going to correct myself because if you called me they, Kevon, I'd be like, <laughs> bro. <laughs> nah, nah, not at all. All right. So I'll make sure I but get I your... do. Hey, you didn't say it. Come on, bro. It's no, no, wrong. I get no. it. I get it. But, but it's I, your name. I definitely want to make it's sure. Your name. your name is your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And in the streets, your name is your name. Hey, listen, as long as the check cash. That's, well, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's spelled the same on a check. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, he exactly. on it, though, right? True no, it's no No, yeah. Is that the difference with that? Yeah, make the difference exactly, exactly. Yeah. like yeah i mean most people that pronounce their name tyrone is t-y-r-o-n-e ah. my name is t-y-r-o-n and honestly my dad is who named me and he corrected me you know because i was i'd allow people to say tyrone you know no big deal to me and he said that's not your name i named you this for now nah, you got to correct people like that. Yeah. what is your name your dad you know, your dad corrected say. you yeah, because no, people, yeah. yeah you got to correct 100 yeah, yeah. what did your name Ronald mean hmm? do you know what your name means uh, no, it wasn't from me. He, he it was a actually it was an actor that he liked huh. named Tyrone Powers, and so he was like, "You're not going. You're obviously not going to be him." So I'm a, you know, how, you know, some of us we won't put our own little twist. So his little twist, I'm gonna drop the e and make it sound a little bit better than Tyrone. You know what I mean? Okay. I was like, "All right, daddy." <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> Look, I'm in fifth ward. Yeah, yeah, you know, whatever that, you say, the Tyrone Tyrone father, though, the power Man, of my father. daddy said my name Tyrone. <laughs> yeah. yeah no so, no, no. Uh, and I appreciate all that. No, no worries. So to give background on how we got here and how this event was created, um, I had an idea years ago um, just from my experience buying my first home mm -hmm. and understanding the power of ownership. And Aisha bought her first house at 23 and I didn't buy my first house till 30. So for me, once I understood, okay, I could buy and I started buying and I learned more about real estate. I bought five homes my first year. Hmm. But I, it took that long to understand. Right. Um, and one of the stories, and I don't, I don't think I've shared this on the podcast, but I'll share it with you guys and we can talk a little bit more uh, about it. When I was 19, my aunt, who's a realtor, tried to get me to buy a home mm. in South Union uh, in a cul-de-sac street. And it's right by Q's old house. And literally that house was $9,000. Mm. And there was $1,000 down, an FHA loan. My mortgage would have been like $200. <laughs> and that dirt right. alone now at a 7,700 square foot lot, 200 grand. Easy. Yeah. And that wealth I didn't get, right? Mm -hmm. It was 11 years later that I bought my first home. And what that would have done for me financially would have been stability, giving me the ability to make long-term decisions. I would have been able to take more riskier jobs, all the different things that come from having a stable base because housing is one of the largest expenses that you have, mm -hmm. right? 
And for black men, what we're not seeing is the other part of the picture, right? Like, look at a situation where, and this is this is a question for the panel I'll lead into. Look at a situation where if a woman owns a home, because black women are out buying black men 100%. two to one, mm -hmm. and you get pregnant, who's the odd man out, mm -hmm. right? If the woman has a stable job, a stable home, and can make long-term financial decisions, and then you come in the picture, you don't own nothing, Right. You may or may not have a stable job. You might be trying to figure it out or whatever. Right. And then y'all get pregnant and you start acting up. Who's out the door? Right. You the removable piece. We were stable. We good. I'll take the baby and we'll right. go. That's what's happening to our black families. That's what's happening to our neighborhoods. And when you look at the statistics, it shows economically. Right. It shows as far as employment decisions. Black women make more money than us. They have better jobs than us. And statistically, we're just moving down and down the list. And it starts with housing. And there's a lot of things on the Internet that say you don't need to own your home or rent <laughs> everywhere and whatever. And what they're not accounting for is what we need as a community is stability. 100%. Right? Can I can I say something? Yeah, please. Don't you all think that that's a society issue? I think that we've been programmed to believe that women go out there, do your thing, particularly in our community, and black men kind of, it seems to me, society is, I call them the powers that be, mm -hmm. seem to perpetuate a story of the black man who can't take care of family, who's not building wealth. And we start believing these, mm -hmm. I don't want to say fabrications, but it's we start hilarious. living, we start making those things reality. You know what I'm saying? Uh, perpetuating, I don't want to call it a myth, but black men are not can't do this and they they're not doing that and black women they've been pushed to we don't need a black man i'm independent even in the music and what we see in television mm -hmm. it, it just seems to me that society is programming <clears throat> certain other members of society to think a particular way and that's also another reason in my opinion why some of that is also happening because there there has to be a societal issue if you see Black men not because I, I know you you say that often that black men are not buying homes and I'm like what's 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 the real issue as to why we're not because I see black men like you mm -hmm. and you are doing it and you're doing it on a big scale I mean you're really scaling large so are you guys just the very very few yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that could be the case. I, and that's why you're doing the I'm, event. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, right, right. That happens right. to be true, right? Here's the craziest part about it. Countless stories of the same situation that I went through, having an opportunity to buy, not making the decision to buy, and then you're with a family or a woman who then inspires you to buy. Yeah. 100%. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's years later down the road. So you're right. There are some societal pieces that are happening and kind of pushing us in different directions, but it's also us not making the decision. And I've had a lot of conversations individually with black men at various stages of life, and the conversation's always the same. I'm not ready right now. Right. Mm. Uh, you know, I, when I get a girlfriend and I, when I know what I want to do, when I whatever, but you're paying rent somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. And the whole time you're losing that opportunity year after year after year after year. And that's the difference between what black women are doing and what black men are doing. What was the difference with these guys then? <clears throat> what makes you different than the other brothers that are oh. afraid or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When did you start to? I'm just curious. So, so I agree with Kevin. So when I met my wife, shout out to Joanne, right? When I met her, <laughs> uh, you know, we stayed in an apartment. Mm. And... I was the one who said, hey, she was ready to buy a house. I was like, hey, look, I got fired from my job one time and I lost everything. I'm not ready to buy a house yet. Mm -hmm. So, look, let's let's invest our money and buy some properties. Right. So we took the angle of buying rental properties first. So if I was to lose my job, then we still can afford this home. Right. So I was trained growing up. You can't afford a home. Always plan for the worst when buying a home. Right. So I just got around people who kind of re uh, engineer my mindset, bought the rentals and then we bought a home. But it was pressure for my wife to buy a home. If it wasn't for her, I, I was not going to buy. But you paying rent, though. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. You paying rent. Yeah. Did and, you but, miss a rent payment? No, I did not. <laughs> no, I did not. It's the same thing. Right. But I, I'm glad that so I did. So mindset? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because by listening to her, 
um, six years ago, we was able to buy our first house. And, and within six years, we had over $120,000 in equity mm-hmm. in six years. So what if I would have done it 10, 15 years right. ago? Mm-hmm. How much yeah, equity I left on the table? Right. 100%. Right. I think uh, part of it might be the psychology that we have as men as well because we're financially responsible for everything. So you're paying all the bills. You're paying for the dates. You're paying for everything. And on top of that, now i got to save up enough to, for a down payment on a mortgage and and keep those payments up every month too. Then you got maintenance. you got taxes. you got insurance. you got all these other things you got to think about. So it is a harder decision, I think, sometimes for, for a male to uh, to get on that. Now, I bought my first house fresh out of college at 22. See, he's not the norm. Yeah. That's so what, true. So what made you yeah. different? Actually, my job made me different. Um, they 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 gave me a moving package because I already I had already been working for them. Part of the moving package was down payment assistance on the house. Mm-hmm. So at twenty two, I bought a house yeah. in a gated neighborhood in Memphis when I lived there. Um, so I think for me, um, and this is kind of interesting because I was having a conversation with my son, um, and I was showing him some things, my old yearbook from high school. And Uh-oh. it shows, right, well, it shows <laughs> where my focus was. And so for me, my focus wasn't to get out and be most productive and, you know, become, you know, become a homeowner and things of that nature early on, whereas my wife had a different mindset. Now, we purchased our home. Uh, now, I got married fairly early, but so we ended up purchasing a home at 25, but it was based on her unction and one how she was already a realtor, had been looking at properties. And so we rented an apartment and then eventually bought a home. So uh, one, it was, I think I fall into a category, a lot of brothers, you know, I was most interested in having a bad whip. That was my first thing. You, <laughs> yeah, know you spent I mean? a lot of money on cars. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, that was, that was what my focus was. You know, I wanted, okay, I had a Cadillac in high school. Okay. I want to go get me a farmer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. what was important to me. So right out of high school, I go buy a $35,000 vehicle with a $700 uh, payment. Mm. Whereas that could have been a three of those houses yeah. that Kevin didn't buy. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. so it's like, you know, some of us uh, grew up in environments where we weren't taught or educated, which isn't an excuse because I read a lot of books, but I just didn't make home ownership one of my initial focuses. Mm-hmm. But if you grew up in a household that did, I bet you would have had that. Yes. House. Well, um, which leads to part of the reason why I'm in real estate, because I remember the challenges that my mom went through to buy a house. Mm. And so it wasn't like I wasn't in an environment. Well, so I had exposure to it. But the reality of the matter is sometimes we are exposed to the right information and still make the wrong decision. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so I can say that it wasn't like I didn't know. You know, I had some understanding. My father owned homes. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like mm-hmm. I didn't have examples, but we don't always follow the right advice or examples that we're presented with. That's just the reality of the matter. So you may have someone there are people that were probably in Chris's scenario where they got a relocation package. Mm-hmm. Everyone didn't make the decision to right. buy like he did. There were some that said, well, you know what? I know I got this package. I'm going to forego that money and just keep renting. GS Lexus. We can make it all wrong. Well, yeah, yeah. Relocate me into an apartment and let me buy this whip. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, how many, yeah. how many big body Benzes and BMWs do we see outside the CUNY homes? Yeah, a bunch of literally. Mm-hmm. I, re- I refuse to acknowledge that statement. <laughs> <laughs> as true as it may be, <laughs> no. Right. I mean, what about you? When did you buy your first? I got lucky. I was dating a young lady, and her parents <laughs> were very. Uh, what's the word? Their mindset was different. Mm-hmm. They owned homes and businesses, and I'm like, I just I end up up in the perfect place. Another five years from now. I'm off this radio and I'm just going to buy up this whole town following her parents' footsteps. And they just threw it out there. Hey, Ben, you should get these two homes. Uh, Why would I do that? You just should. Okay. And literally that's how it started. I didn't understand the importance of, of it. It just seemed by watching them, they were great role models. It seemed by watching them having properties and owning things was the right thing to do. But my my little brain didn't understand the concept as of to why, mm-hmm. but it seemed in, in the prices of the two homes was, was such great prices. I'm like, I think I can afford to have these homes and make these payments and still live a comfortable life. Mm-hmm. And so I did. And then I'm one of those kind of people, I like everything to be paid off. So then I started 
paying everything off. So all the homes that I have now are all paid off. And most people tell you, that's hey, all. I don't know if that's a clap. <laughs> nah, because 100%. y'all know I'm into social media. There's a lot of dudes on Instagram saying that that's bad. You should have debt and all this. But I'm one of those kind of guys. I'm a Dave Ramsey guy. I just don't. Oh, I don't. Boy. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's based on where you are and where your position is. And I just what didn't you feel want comfortable that. With. And I always felt like, you know, if I got these, and I probably could have still sold the home and, and made money. But if anything would have would have happened bad at my job. Mm -hmm. I still had these homes and I could liquidate those and still have Mm -hmm. some cash. And let me, let me interject just to that point. A lot of times what I see uh, us do and people do it with cross cultures is we buy into other people's philosophies without buying into the lifestyle associated with that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, there are people that say, yeah, you should have dead and this, that, and the third, but for a person like yourself, that doesn't even fit your risk profile. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? So it's less about what works good for this guy. And it's more about being self-aware with who you are and what are your drivers and detonators and being congruent with I'm that. So I applaud you, you for, you, yeah. you know, having you feel feel to yeah, I got Social you. media be making it feel bad, so, man. There's a couple of themes here, and I don't know if you guys noticed, right? So out of the five of us, mm-hmm. 80%, so the four of us, were all influenced by a woman to buy our first one. 100%. Home. Mm-hmm. And only 20%, one wow, man out I of five. I did not even notice that I was one of you four. Yeah. yeah. It so, was because but, of the one. But look at the right. theme. Right. And that theme is shown true because the Mm. second biggest buyer is families right Mm. Mm -hmm. like a couple right Mm. so which this validates the reason and and this validates the reason for this event Mm -hmm. 100 Mm -hmm. because what we're finding is where Mm -hmm. we're leaving off in that wealth journey in that transfer of information whether we have the right influences or not is we're leaving money on the table, mm-hmm. right? For years and years on end. So when we buy that car and then we wait 10 years to buy that house, right. it's not the cost of the car or the cost of the house in year one. Right. It's the loss over that 10 year span that of time. Of that $9,000 house that I didn't buy, that right. would be worth $200,000, right? And what that does for us. So if I was to <clears throat> want to inspire anybody for this event, specifically it's, what does having that money in your pocket do for you? Yeah. Right. What does having that economic stability do for you over the lifespan <laughs> of exactly. 10 years, 15 years? Because at the end of the day, you're going to pay rent. And you're not going to miss a payment. You're going to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. You're going to buy the car anyway. Right. All I'm saying is buy the house first. And I remember um, when I was 18, uh, I did an internship in Belize and I met one of 50 cents friends. I think I might've told you this story. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he was there celebrating his honeymoon or whatever. And he was telling me how when 50 cent first got his first deal, he set all his friends down and he was like, Hey, we going legit. We got to figure this out. So this one particular friend picked real estate and his wife got her masters and whatever, but he was drilling into my mind. He was like, buy the house first. He's like, buy the house first, then buy the cars. Buy the house first, then do the trips. Buy the house first, then whatever. Because once you buy the house, you're good. Mm-hmm. Because here's the you thing, and, and this is the secret that nobody even told you. You could lose a job and rent the house out, mm-hmm. and you could move, mm-hmm. but you still own the asset, right? And I think buying a home, especially as a first-time home buyer, is the easiest hurdle to cross. Because with 0% down programs, 3% down programs, down payment assistance, affordable housing programs, there's so many incentives for people to get in that first house that don't work for investment properties where you got to put 10, 15, 20% down, right? right? Mm -hmm. So you can get in this one for 3%, then you can figure it out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think another point on that that is is lost from a financial uh, education perspective is people see renting as lower risk. As a former mortgage broker, one of the things I used to always tell people, I say, listen, when you don't pay your rent three, four, five days, you're late, they file an eviction notice. So in mm-hmm. 30 days, you're out. You're not getting, you're not losing a house in 30 days. Mm-hmm. You know, um, our first home that we purchased, which happened to be a foreclosure, um, the people who were in the house hadn't made a mortgage payment in over two and a half years. Oh, man. Wow. You know what I mean? Because the lender, the lender literally doesn't want your house. Mm-hmm. They don't want your house. They want you to make those interest payments. Yes, sir. And so it's not understanding certain aspects of how finances work causes us to have this certain amount of, of fear. Um, and we think, and I'm not saying there's no risk or I'm not even saying that renting is less riskier, but to me, uh, once you understand the dynamics of how this stuff works, 
you'll be <coughs> out on your two feet <laughs> mm-hmm. faster as a renter than you will as a homeowner. What you guys are doing, though, just keep in mind, it does look risky. It looks scary. You know, a house is big and gigantic and looks <laughs> like it's a huge responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think a lot of times that's part of the fear as well, that it looks so cumbersome <coughs> and maybe I can't, I can't do that. I can't do mm-hmm. What you doing, Kevin? I can't do what y'all doing. Mm-hmm. So it looks difficult, you know. Yeah. I, I, and I say, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I would say part of it is though, because if if just buying a house was the key, then there would be no such word as foreclosure. Right? <laughs> exactly. That's a good point. That's a good so point. It's, it's not about you, you. You have to make the right step, but you have to make the the right step in the right <clears throat> location. You got to buy where the values are going up. You got to buy something where the deferred maintenance on the house means the things that the previous person didn't do aren't going to pile up on you to the point where you can't pay for the roof and pay pay to feed the kids. Mm. You know, you have all those different things that can happen. Your insurance can double if you're in an area where it becomes part of a flood zone. Mm. Hurricane can come. It's a whole lot of fa- financial factors that are uh, that need that need to be considered in addition to just buy the house. Yeah. And, and you just scared a lot of people by the yeah. things you just said, mm-hmm. and it's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also, I want the millions of people who's watching right now is that buying your first home or your investment property can set you up for the next level. And that's what it did for my wife and I. We used our first home, our investment properties, refinanced, put out the money to start doing new construction. And that's mm-hmm. why I met Chris at right? mm-hmm. the streets of Liberty Road, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So buying your first <coughs> home can set you up for the next level. And that's what it did for, for Yes to Real Estate. So mm-hmm. something makes y'all different though. Yeah. They'll at this event that you're gonna hold, mm-hmm. there's gonna be a lot of people in that room. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be a very limited number that will be able to do what you all have done. You make it look so I'm I'm just I'm a I feel like an outsider. <coughs> it seems easy. Like when I'm watching you on Instagram, it seems so easy. It seems so easy. I'm just gonna do what Kevin did. There, but I've watched him and I've talked to him. There's a whole mental way of thinking that you all have that's not really the norm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people get pumped up by those things like, oh, I can do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But you're a very peculiar person in what you're doing and why you do it. You love doing it. You wake up in the morning excited about doing what you do. You you wake up in the morning. All of y'all, you wake up excited to do this. Uh, Some people looking at it as, oh, this is a fast way for me to make some bread. But that's I don't, not what it is. Well, let me speak to this, Kevin. So I think the this what this event about isn't what we do as a profession in our career. Yeah, okay. This is about bringing an awareness based on what we've learned and been exposed to. So we've looked look behind the curtain, and we're now we're coming to our community to say, listen, forget what we do for a living. Let's talk about the underlying principle that we've learned from what we do as a living, yes, sir. which is enough of us aren't buying a house as a primary gotcha. residence. Gotcha. We're going to get to the investing p- component of that. That's, mm-hmm. you know, LeBron James went from high school to the pros, right? <laughs> Most of us aren't going to do that, right? That, so, okay, you, let's talk you. about the next step. And so yes, the next sir. step uh, is let's talk about how to get you from being a renter <laughs> just to being a home buyer. Yeah, there you can build, you can develop, you can do all these build, you know, custom homes like what Kevin is. That's master's level uh, execution. Gotcha. Let's just you. talk Thank about you. base, yeah. fundamental. You're paying twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 a month right now in rent. That's fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars a year. What if we redirected that into an asset that you now own, and now that not only pays down your principal, you have the benefit of appreciation, and now you have an asset that's now going to compound over time. So that's where our focus is with this event. Would you glad, agree? See, I'm glad he I, said that. That's I agree great. completely. Yeah, yeah. I did what I do now for ten years without owning a thing. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, between my parents' house and apartments, even when I met Aisha, I was paying thirteen hundred dollars a month in rent when her mortgage was seven hundred. <laughs> and it just right the math is still a math, right? But mm-hmm. what we don't have is the space in between. We don't have the information to go. You can. Here's permission. I here's from so many men. I don't think I'm ready, right. or I don't. I, I got questions. I don't know. Like. It's funny. I had a conversation with a guy and I'm going to call him out and he's going to be mad at Uh-oh. it because he's coming to the event. But whatever. <laughs> Young black man makes $100,000 a year, 800 credit score, $10,000 in the bank. And he's telling me why he can't buy. And he's about to go spend $200,000 on a master's degree at Rice. 
for something that don't directly help him in his career path. I was like, we're doing this whole thing backwards. Mm. And we sat on the phone for two hours, and I was just trying to convince him to buy. I was like, you need to own a home. You're paying $1,500 a month in rent right now. It's going to be $1,700 next year because that's the other piece. And we can speak to this as a group. Housing cost increases 5% every year for renters. Mm -hmm. You get a 3 to 5% rent increase. Either you stay where you're at or not. And then if you move, you have moving expenses, mm -hmm. which calculate that as a right. percentage increase. Mm -hmm. So when you look at what you're costing in a span of 10 years, you're paying 50 percent more in housing costs. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's also happening, too. Yeah. So your decisions end up limiting your options mm -hmm. year after year after year. So this ain't about what you do for a living. This is about giving you stability at home so you can make the long-term economic decisions to start the business or do the job or quit the job or whatever you want to do. Because at the end of the day, that's what the other cultures are doing, right? They're using their house as a stepping stone to pay for their kids to go to college. 100%. You know, that's the 529 plan is the equity I got in this house. Right. And the majority of American wealth is in our homes but not in black houses because yeah. we don't have the level of wealth mm. yeah and uh to further uh, respond to your question about the fear um he just mentioned lebron james lebron still got coaches yeah right? mm. so, so if the yeah. best has a coach you definitely should have a coach mm. you should definitely be talking to a mortgage i mean a, a mortgage lender that's lent to a lot of first-time home buyers uh a real estate agent or broker that you can ask them hey show me what, what the, your last 10 clients your clients that bought the house five years ago what's that house worth now mm. <clears throat> now, That's now, you, now you know you're dealing with somebody that knows how to help people find the right house in the right area, mm. right? And so, one of my friends just bought a house in a uh, Pearland four years ago in one of those new subdivisions. They 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 built up the entire subdivision. The demand was so high, he sold his house a year later for got over a hundred thousand dollars in profit. Mm. He went and bought another house farther out. And now he's got another hundred thousand dollars in profit. Yeah, mm. a lot of a lot of people do that. Yeah, they, they, they call it trading up. Every two years, you sell right. your house. Go Let me ahead, interject go one uh, point to that. So uh, Bloomberg <laughs> just came out with an article here this past week, um, and I posted it on Instagram, and it talked about basically in a nutshell, they said the biggest mistake that millennials are making uh, who are current renters is they're trying to make their first home, their dream home purchase. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was a mortgage broker, I used to I like see this that. all the time. Mm -hmm. And I equated to buying a vehicle or getting your first vehicle. I, I remember a buddy of mine, his parents were going to get him a vehicle. I was like, what you want? He's like, dude, if it got four wheels and a motor, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> And I was like, that's the mentality we should have about our home purchase. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nobody says, I'm going to keep riding the bus using mass transit until I get the big body bins. No, you're going to get the hoopty. You're going to drive the hoopty. You're going to shine it up. And you're going to move your your way up. But when it comes to housing, we feel like we got to go from the apartment where we're paying $1,200 a month to, you know, one of these places like what Kevin built, which is 7,000 square feet with a pool, this, that, and the third. <laughs> yeah. And when you study yeah. financial independence and those who are financially wealthy and uh, independent, None of them started out with their dream home. They right. use that starter home to buy investment properties, take that equity to buy more properties, and then 5, 10, 15 years later, yeah. they got that dream home. So so a prime example of that is, is for my wife and I. So we bought our first home six years ago. We paid 275000 I overpaid for the house. Shout out to my wife for making me do it. <laughs> but we <laughs> definitely overpaid for the home. And I told my wife, but I knew also over a period of time that it was going to adjust, right? So year one, no equity. Year two, no equity. Year three, we got about 20000 right? Then what happened? Old COVID hit. Boom. Mm -hmm. Right? Co <laughs> he looked happy. Yeah. He's the no, only no, person that no, ever looked happy. No, 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 COVID, COVID, COVID hit. Was mad. <laughs> COVID hit. <laughs> For the millions of people watching, I'm not smiling. I'm I'm smiling on the inside right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm not smiling, but I'm smiling on <laughs> COVID hit. Um, we sold our home, 120000 in equity, right? Then we backdoor and then bought our next home, for our, our forever home, for, for 900000 right? 900000 And for the, for the people who say your primary home is not an investment, hmm. I, I disagree with that. 100%. Right? So we bought our primary home for 900000 One year later, I, I sent out an appraiser to get it appraised. 1.25 Let's go. Why, why mm -hmm. did you do that? Mm -hmm. Why? Why did you get it Why did I get appraised? Yes, because I knew I was buying it at a great price, right? And I wanted to know what is this home worth. So if I wanted to uh, pull out equity or, or whatever I want to do. I wanted to know my options. 
And I wanted to show my wife that her, her man know what she what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know what the right one. Yeah. Yeah. Now here's a question: When you go to the ATM, you ever get that account balance? Mm -hmm. right. That's all he was doing. Right. He yeah. pulling an account balance on his investment. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. He's saying, "Hey, yeah. I know what I'm doing when right. I put my money in the bank, yeah. right? I just want to check my balance real quick." Yeah. So you know, financial mile mark. I say this too. Like we always hear a statement: uh, whether a house is or is not an investment, it's definitely an investment. You can buy a, bo a bar of gold. For two thousand dollars, if that price goes down to eighteen hundred dollars next year, it's still an investment. It's just right. a, the asset has depreciated in value, and the asset can also increase in value. 100%. Dumb question: um, All of you think that the homes that you live in now that you truly love, it's an investment property? One hundred percent. Yeah, and I don't really, really love them. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Like I, his, my father used to tell me this all the time: treat houses like used cars. <laughs> Right now, you'll build a forever home and you'll do whatever. But at the end of the day, it's an asset. And mm -hmm. the reason it's an asset is different for us than it is for other communities, because everybody will tell you on the Internet, your house is not an asset. Right. right. For our community, it is. Right. And the reason it is, is the economic I'm glad stability. Saying this. Right. It is the this. ability to pull out equity in the future. Right. It is the mm -hmm. fact that there's not capital available for us in the same way that it's available for everybody else. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talk about generational wealth and I know a lot of people that's a buzzword. That's a buzzword yeah. But I want to let me tell a story of my mother's home. So my mother bought her first house. I was probably five. It was right when my parents got a divorce. It was the house next door to my my childhood home. The lady sold her that house on a $30,000 owner finance note. My mom was a teacher. She ain't make no bunch of money, right? We bought that house for my mother in 2019. We paid my mom $200,000. She sold it to us for a discount because she probably could have sold it for three, three. Easily. right? Mm -hmm. That house is worth four fifty dollars right now. Mm -hmm. We haven't done anything to the house. Mm -hmm. And she's still in the house. Mm -hmm. We own the house. We just transferred ownership, paid her out, took a mortgage in on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We'll build our next house on that site. Mm -hmm. That house will be worth one seven, mm -hmm. one eight, mm -hmm. right? So that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars at purchase, mm -hmm. right? Another two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on equity after we build the monstrosity that we. It's not a monstrosity. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the wrong word. Let me, let me we build the, the proper phraseology is the palace. Yeah. <laughs> After we build what we're going to build and do what we're going to do, we'll still have that equity. And that's almost $500,000 that was given to me by my mother. Mm -hmm. She don't have nothing else to give me, but she did have that. Mm -hmm. That is something. And that is an inheritance, right? Now, I had to pay for it, yeah. sure. But I got access to this gift. So now when... Maybe my daughter or my son is growing their business. I can say, hey, we're going to take 200 out the house and seed your business mm. so that they don't have to bootstrap and right. figure it out. That's a difference, too. Can I ask you guys another question, too? Because I know you, I am not on it. On any of your levels. Uh, come on, so, man. So I'm not. I'm not, man. Don't I'm, you I'm just a small... love that self deprecating, yeah. right? It's, it's not. Like it's not, yeah. man. He does it so Y'all wake up, up it, too. It's it's like, you guys, too. Oh, I got six, yeah, seven yeah. homes. He got me believe yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All accidental. And by the way, while you were talking, the house that I live in to this day, the reason why I had that house is because of another girlfriend. Mm. <clears throat> <laughs> So shout yeah, out to which black is kinda, women. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so, <laughs> the winners of the day, baby girl. girl. <laughs> Be, being black, doing what you do, were, was it a fight for you all? Because generally, when I think of the stuff that you guys do, I hate to say this, there's a different face on building homes. <clears throat> sure. Mm -hmm. And did you guys have any struggles because you're doing what you're doing in the space oftentimes looks like it's a white space. Sure. I'm just going to say. 100%. 100%. And what, what kind of problems did y'all have with that? I'm just curious. So I, I got a story that we, me and Andre are both a part of. Um, I was the first person to the new construction homes in north end of Fifth Ward, 77026 zip code. I got turned down for 27 different lenders and investors b before I can get anything done on that property. Wow. I ended up having so a, can I ask, so everything about your perfect score here, perfect business. It's decent. It was, it was fair. It, it, was just, it was enough to where it should have been uh, right. approved. Should have got a yes. Yeah, should have got a pr approved. And I tell people this too. Sometimes we think it's all racism. Sometimes it's the person on the other side of that desk not usually seeing somebody like you on the other side. Mm. And they got a job. <clears throat> 
and they have to perform and they're scared, well, this might be a risk for me. To, even if I like this person individually, I'm going to lose my job. That, is, that exactly. is subtle racism. <laughs> well, well it's, it's, it's because you don't know. Well, some of it, it is benefit of the doubt. They give white folks the benefit of the doubt. They exactly. don't give them. It's, it's, it's some of both. It's some of both. It's mm. some of both. Because if, if you had an 18-year-old kid walk in there and saying, you know, you believe that's well, a good well, point. he's young. I don't know if he can handle it. You know? Mm-hmm. So, that's a good yeah, point. It's, it's You're good. not 18 years old. Right. I'm not. <laughs> right. But anyway. So, don't discount my and, man. He could be 18 yeah. years old. And he was a trailblazer. Uh, well, like, he looked 22. He, he, he was innovative. <laughs> he looked 22. Not, yeah. No disrespect. Yeah, no. So, um, <laughs> so, so, so after I finally get the finance, I had to go private. I had to get some of my friends to put up some money out of 401k. Really? I had to get the, the, the owner of the property to, to uh, joint venture with me instead of me buying it outright, like to sell the financing. Then I built the houses. And all my buyers ended up being young black professionals. Mm. Um, four or more, three of them were women. One was a couple, <laughs> and one was a guy that used it as an, as an investment property. Black guy? Black guy. See? Yeah. One. One. Out of four. <laughs> yeah, out of four. Five. Out of five. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The 20% rule. 20%. Rule. Yeah. And then, but fast forward, all those, all those young women that bought those houses and the, the couple, well, all of them actually now, they all have like $100,000 in equity in their home, and they weren't even trying to be investors. They just bought 3% down, 0% down. But Andre's building houses up the street that are smaller that are selling for a higher dollar per square foot. So now all of them have made over $100,000 just by buying the, the right house at the right time, at the right wow. place. Yeah. Wow. What What did you, like, th- there has to be somewhere in there where somebody was trying to stop you because the way you Yeah, look. yeah. I, that, and then representation matters, I tell people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? So you, you're going down a journey of home ownership and you don't see yourself represented, right? I grew up on Club Creek and, and, and Fifth Ward. Mm. You know, shotgun houses and rent houses, right? So it, it wasn't until I seen someone like me who, who did it, right? And for me, for new construction, it wasn't until I ran into him, uh, Chris, on Liberty Road, right? It was crazy. I was coming out of 59. I seen him getting out of his BMW and going, down, <laughs> going, 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 going into the new construction. And the first thing I thought, he must be associated with this property. I got out the car. I seen him. I ran across 59, uh, the uh, Liberty Row. I said, hey, I'm Andre. I had on my uniform. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm Andre Barablo. I want to do new construction. I'm all eager and excited. I said, this you? Right? And th- what's the important qu- part about that is when I seen Chris, in my mind, I said, this was his. I didn't mm-hmm. say he was a mm-hmm. worker. Mm-hmm. I didn't say he was there cleaning up. Mm-hmm. I associated with him getting out the car with this was his. Mm-hmm. And it was. Right? And then when I seen him, that day my life was changed because I said, if Chris can do it, mm-hmm. I can do it because mm-hmm. I I seen someone who looked like me do it. That is that's, a very important part. That is very important. Though. Representation matters. Mm-hmm. It, it definitely I, does. I want to tell a story about what you're saying about people trying to stop you. So at our Grand Park Square community in Southside, we have one white couple that lives in that community. And this was the only pure white couple that that bought in that community uh, and their agent, one of the top real estate agents in the city, one of the largest brokerages was it, was it in the city. It was not. Uh, <laughs> it was not. <laughs> but, you know, they they up there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, their inspector was white. So here's the problems that we had. Now, mind you, I don't typically see every house, but if there's issues, I'm going to come. So. We get an inspection report. Inspection report's a mile long. I'm like, hold on, this is a new build house. That don't make sense. And it's stuff like, I don't feel like this is adequate. I don't feel like mm. this is, you know, acceptable. It's saying it, I don't it's feel. It's in the report. I don't wow. feel like mm. this makes sense. So I said, hmm, well, this is weird, but, you know, we'll, we'll warranty it, whatever. Let's just do all the repairs. So we do all the repairs. The inspector comes back. I said, hey, we'll pay for the reinspection. No problem. Whatever. Come back. And the inspection's taking a long time. I'm like, well, I'm calling my staff members across. So I, I pull up. I go, and this inspector's in the backyard, and he's reading my staff the riot act. He's like, yeah, y'all, we have French drains that we install in each one of our homes. He said, I don't feel like this French drain at four inches is enough to support the drainage of this house. Now, I'm walking into the conversation. Now, when people see me, <laughs> and a lot of times I'm, I wear a Park Street shirt and I, you know, whatever, but I'm a reasonably casual black man, unless I'm like in a suit or whatever, you wouldn't necessarily know that I own the you company. Own right. yeah. So I walk in, I said, hold on, catch me up. And I, this is what I tell them. I said, hold on, catch me up because I don't understand. 
And he says, well, I was just telling him that I don't feel like this four inch drain line is adequate enough for this house. I said, are you a drain specialist? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, no. He said, but you can have your gutter guys do the calculation. So I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you a gutter specialist? <laughs> and he said, no. I said, so why don't you do the calc? Do you have some metric that you're going off of? Right. No, mm -hmm. I just don't feel like it's adequate. I said, now let me tell you something. Do you see standing water? We've built 20 of these. We haven't had a single issue. This isn't even a requirement of the city. We do this mm -hmm. as a plus mm -hmm. to make sure that our buyers don't have any water. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand why you think that we need to take something that's an additive, that's a value add right. to the, the buyers up a notch because you don't feel like it's adequate with no basis for what right. you're saying. Right. Now, I might look casual, but my degree is in Yeah, yeah, you like, know, you know. I've been doing this yeah, for yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah. He was pissed. He said. I love this story. He right. said. <laughs> you know what? I my seat. He <laughs> said, you know what? I don't have time to talk to you right now. I need to finish my inspection. Uh, so he goes up to the attic and whatever. He comes back. He's like, I only have 10 minutes. I have somewhere to be here. 20 minutes later. And I'm sitting here talking to the buyer about where the cat's going to sleep and whatever. He comes downstairs. He's like, they said, oh, well, did you find more stuff? He said, I found a bunch of stuff. Oh. I said, mm. Hmm, that's odd. Okay. He said, I don't have time for questions right now. I'm going to make myself available for questions tomorrow between 9 and 10. Mm. I was like, hmm. That's it. Now we never had. <laughs> I, love, this. Yeah. I love you because I would have been off the. I would have been off the yeah. chain already. No, I mean, that's not how I you love fight this those about you. I love this. So yeah. anyway, the next day, waiting for nine to ten, no availability. Send me the voicemail. Send me the voicemail. No inspection report. Hmm. Interesting. So then we get a cancellation of contract. After the concerns of the inspector, the buyers were so gravely concerned that they don't feel comfortable moving forward with the house. They hmm. feel like the structure is in jeopardy. Hmm. That's weird. And we haven't seen a report. Hmm. So I called the inspector because I just had to know. I'm like, what could be so whatever? I asked the inspector. I said, hey, what did you see that was so concerning that they needed to cancel the contract? So he said, yeah, I, I went to the side of the house and I looked underneath uh, the siding and I saw your framing is overhanging your slab by two inches. That means half the wall is over over the side of the house. I don't have a measuring tape. I didn't measure it, but I feel like uh, the house is in jeopardy of falling down. I said, what? <laughs> I was on the way to Dallas. We was It was... We were supposed to go to Dallas at one o'clock. We didn't go to Dallas till eight. We didn't go to Dallas till eight o'clock. Mm. I went to the house immediately and I put a measuring tape on exact. And I sent him. Well, actually, I didn't even send it to him. I filed a complaint against him. <laughs> I went the exact spot he was saying was overhanging by two inches because he felt like not only was the assembly built exactly how it was per plan. When you put a measuring tape on it, the entire assembly wasn't even an inch over. And it wasn't the foundation or the framing that was over. It was the overhang from the siding and the sheathing and the firewall, which it's supposed to be. Right. It's mm -hmm. on our drawings. Direct. Mm -hmm. I said a framer wouldn't even frame that. Right. Yeah. And that don't make sense. So anyway, I lit them up. I lit the agent up or whatever. I wrote a very impassioned email about how crazy this <laughs> is. I offered to pay for a different inspector. And I said, I've never experienced this. But he started feeling some kind of way when he crossed 288. He started mm -hmm. feeling some kind of way when he saw my black face building this house. Mm -hmm. And he didn't feel like they should be in a house built by a black man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel, right? Mm -hmm. We've had that again when we built Charleston, million dollar house. A great house. White buyers. Beautiful house. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing house. White buyers love the house. From the open house, that they, they this our house. Their agent felt like they should wow. get more for what they're paying. Now we put we put more than anybody yeah. else does because mm -hmm. I know you gotta come it with it, especially in the areas we build. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. But she felt like they should be in a better area. She felt like they should get a better house because of who they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's ultimately because of who we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. Bad, bad agent right. for steering, by the way. Yeah. Uh, look, <laughs> yeah. You know, Trek got yeah. complaint forms for reasons, yeah. and we do things. And people tell but does, me. But does your complaints, do they have 
meat to them? Do they have an effect on those people? That's that's hard to tell because mm-hmm. you can't you can't chase it down enough to know. But I know this: I'm gonna fight um, ignorance with excellence. Mm. Yes, sir. I'm gonna continue to exceed expectations for every single buyer because that's not specific to this one particular group. They didn't get more or less service than anybody else. I'm going to make sure that our product is the best product. Mm. Period. Mm. Gotcha. And that's just in my heart. And the regardless, the time will tell. Yeah. Like. We named the company Park Street. We ain't named it Kevin Shelton's Homes or Joe Black's Truck Homes or whatever. <laughs> we named it Park Street Homes. And there's a reason that we did that. And there's a story behind that name and a quality that means something. And every single house that gets that plaque means something to us. And we stand behind that. And that's for everybody. Mm. That's not a black thing, a white thing, a Hispanic thing, an Asian thing, an Indian thing. <clears throat> that's for everybody. We build homes for everybody. Mm. But it's black people building them. Mm-hmm. And I do want people to know that because representation does matter. 100%. So when I see them young black boys walking down the street going, oh, you built this? Are you work for some? No, 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 no. You right. can, too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because exactly. I was a little boy in third war walking around, too. Right. Mm-hmm. And I know, hey, I went to Yates just like you. Mm-hmm. I went to U of H right there across the street from Yates. Mm-hmm. All this is available <laughs> for you. And I'll show you how to do it. You just got to want to do it. Mm-hmm. But that's the next step. It starts with buying a house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and, and the great thing about buying houses in the communities that we're in, we, we all pretty much do the same thing. Some people on a higher level, right? But mm-hmm. as you can see, we are here because we believe that completion is better than competition, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. This is not a competition matter. This mm-hmm. is a completion matter, mm-hmm. right? We all have a different message, a, a method, way of doing it, but the same um end result that we're looking for mm-hmm. is for people to buy a home. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about friends because there's a couple of things. We talked about your friend who just bought a house and we talked about some of the people associated. I think one of the biggest influences to home purchase or financial freedom right. is your friend group, right? Like right. I had all y'all phone number. I could call y'all on the phone. When Andre got questions, he can call me on the phone. Mm-hmm. When I got questions, a lot I of might call mm-hmm. Tyron. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's all about your network. And when Aisha bought her first house at 23, five of her girlfriends followed behind her mm-hmm. because they watched her and they went, oh, girl, you mind right now? What did you need to do? Right. Mm-hmm. Who did you talk to? Who's your loan officer? Who was your realtor? And then they bought subsequent, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the same way. We re- refinanced our house <laughs> in the in the COVID pandemic and got a 2% interest rate. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling all our friends, I'm like, y'all need to refinance right now. Some listened, some didn't. The ones who listened... <laughs> got a 2% interest rate, mm-hmm. and cashed out on some of their equity in their house, love their new mortgage now. Mm-hmm. My mortgage dropped from $2,200 to $1,500. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And literally, it's who you get the information from and who you're also following. Because mm-hmm. if you hanging out with folks drinking on the corner or they going to the dealership, they ain't going to the, you know, the open house, they right. going mm-hmm. to the dealership, mm-hmm. you're soon to follow. So mm-hmm. what is it about men... And our way that we we have friendships or adolescent friendships, young men friendships, you know, the people we go play basketball with that stops us from being able to take those next steps. Um, and talk I about think that. you guys were better than again. <laughs> listen, I, not, not until you came along. I, I was a solo player in my life <laughs> at all times. Don't trust nobody. I'll figure it out myself. I just wake up in the morning and I do. And I'm still bad at that. I like. I think it's interesting, though, because all you guys don't even know y'all younger than me, but it's interesting to listen to you and and hear the information because I wish I would have got it years ago. Hmm. You know, I was just totally somewhere else, but you get it when you get it sometimes. So you're right. I do believe you need a strong friends circle. I do believe that you need mentors, and I don't think that that's being done for a lot of people that look like us to understand the importance of that and having you a little friendship circle, so to speak, of people you can go to. Like, again, for me, I was like, I'm focused. I got to do it alone. Forget everybody. I'll just do it alone and I'll make it work. And I got lucky. But I would be way down the street. My conversation would definitely be like you guys if I would have had people in my circle that would have helped me grow, if I would have had a mentor that would help me grow, maybe my business, because what I was doing, it put me in a different 
circle or something like that. But I really admire where you got like you saw somebody and you just walked up to him like, hey. You're doing something. My whole and career, I need, I've been doing yeah, that. I you know that what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, so I salute y'all with that. Uh, but you're right. You don't see a lot of people doing it. When you started in this circle, and I just noticed from listening to your conversations and being around you, that you a lot of the people doing what you do did not look like you. Mm-hmm. So you don't even know that this is possible until COVID teaches us to get on social media and you see people like y'all mm-hmm. like, oh, we we doing this? Oh, I didn't know we was doing this. I just, you know, like when I said Dave Rain, he's like, come on, dog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, dog. I'm going to have to give you some. I'm going to have to give you. I'm going to have to be old mentor too. <laughs> come on under me, Hannah. God. I, I love Dave, by the way. No, I no, no disrespect. Yeah. No, it, it works for, yeah. for 90. Yeah. 8% of people, <laughs> mm-hmm. Dave Ramsey is the right recipe because it's the decisions, right? It goes to the decisions. And when you're not able to make the right decisions in the clutch, right? If you're in the pocket and you're about to throw the ball and you know you're going to throw that bitch to the ground, right. you need somebody to be able to tell you what the play is. Can I say mm-hmm. something too? I don't think it's fair to go to somebody and say, I want, to men- I want you to mentor me, One but nine. I have nothing... To right. give you a return. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, I ain't mean to make right. nobody yeah. upset over yeah. here. But yeah. I, I believe that, like, I think so many people in life, I just want to be close to you, right, Tyron, because I know I can right. take some of what you have right. and I can build on it. <clears throat> right. But I have absolutely nothing to right. offer you for the information you give me. So why should you sit here and unload all this great information? It's unfair for all the years mm that you went through right. to acquire that knowledge and somebody expects to come up to you and you just give them the game. You know, Game is not, to, what, what the rappers it, tell you? No, game not it's so, man. Not so, and, and, and I don't want to make anybody mad, but I think it's unfair sometimes when somebody comes up to you and say, hey man, show me how to do this. Right. And I ain't offered you nothing. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, I think, you know, all of us have social media platforms. I think more is caught than taught. And so um, I think a lot of times what you said is very true. We just want to be so close up to the person. But if you follow Andre, he's already giving you the playbook. Mm -hmm. If you follow Chris, he's already Mm -hmm. giving you the playbook. Mm -hmm. Chris don't have to hold my hand, (laughs) you know what I'm saying, (laughs) to to show me what the steps are. But see, what it is is that's what people want. They want someone to hold their hand. And most people think they want a mentor. They really don't. A mentor isn't somebody you listen to. A mentor is somebody who's thinking you take and you execute what they tell you to do. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Not Amen. they tell you, oh, okay, because see, once they tell you, now you're going, okay, do I want to do that or not? Mm-hmm. Kevin can tell you numerous people that came <laughs> to him and say, hey, how, what do I do? He tell them A, B, C, and D. And then they say, well, okay, well, Chris said a different A. Chris had A plus, so I ain't going to take that from Kevin. And then Andre said, <laughs> yeah. uh, don't do D, do L. So I'm really going to do one and a half of the four things he told me. Yes, well, no, sir. that's not what a mentor is. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? And so um, <clears throat> and so you don't need to be close up to people. You know, this is a question I get all the time, and I know y'all get it too. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of frustrating to me. People say, hey, what's, you know, can you recommend to me one great book on building? Or development or investing. Mm. And I think when I was broke, staying on my buddy's um, um, <laughs> um, in his, his living room, I went to Barnes and Noble and read every book. Mm. Every single one. You know what every I'm saying? Single. I went on Amazon when I started making a few nickels. I bought every <laughs> book associated with the topic. Why? Yeah. It's a $15, $20 book. Mm-hmm. But see, what people want is give me the numbers to the lottery. Mm. I want that one. I, love that. I want that one setup. I want that one combination that's gonna, you know, take, you know, that I'm gonna win with. And that's not how it works. That leads to this, you know, instant gratification, something for nothing. You know, I'm just gonna throw one thing against the wall and get rich. And that is not what happens. That's not what works. And nobody that you really aspire to be like has gotten to their level of success that way. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, but to your point, there's always ways to bring value. Like I said, if you're, if you're going to the the real estate agent that's already helped other people their incentive is hey I, if i help this person figure this out then he's going to buy a house with me right um, i also also teach people this you may not have anything personally of value but network go out and get business cards you get business cards from a commercial lender that that may lend for new construction you don't you haven't bought your first house yet but guess what that may be your way to go talk to somebody that is a builder that's looking for another lender hey i don't this guy is no use to me but here's his card mm. now you bring value to that person it's something that you didn't bring personally um, so it's always ways outside of what what you can personally bring to the table that you can um, third th- th- third party validation can help you get in with somebody that, that you're trying to get information from. Yes, sir. Resourcefulness. And, yeah. Resourcefulness. Yeah. And and for me, I tell people, people who pay pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> 
<laughs> no, that's true because here's the I thing. I feel that. Okay. I, and all the guys up here, I, I, I. I, I, I sow into him. I believe in that purpose. And there's no way I'm going to come to Kevin and drain Kevin dry if I'm not sowing into his vision, mm-hmm. right? Right? With time, energy, finances, or whatever it might be. People who pay, pay attention. Because when, when, when I first got started in the game, I was giving the game away for free. Mm-hmm. Two, three years. I was doing field trips every day. You know, I, at the house with the wife, babe, I'm about to go out in the streets. I'm just showing everybody houses. I'm, you want to talk about real estate? You, you, the cats and dogs walking. I'm talking to everybody, right? <laughs> and then it got to a point where people were taking advantage of you, mm-hmm. right? They, they drain you dry, and guess what? They keep coming back to the well for more, mm-hmm. right? Because they know this well is free, mm-hmm. right? And so once I start putting a price tag to my time, because I realized, oh, my time is valuable. Mm-hmm. I start putting time money associated with my time, it, it kind of... D- dissipate the people who were just wasting time. Eliminate the taxes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it brought people to me who was really serious about learning. So now mm-hmm. your investment is your money. My investment is giving you the intellectual property to make sure you avoid the pitfalls when it comes to buying your first home, real estate, development, rentals, or whatever it might be. And when I started doing that, the business went to another level, but also I was able to uh, have my time back because I'm only dealing with people who wants it. Mm-hmm. Right? People who pay, pay attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not like gonna, a book. So you're gonna, pay, you're gonna pay either way. Yes. You're gonna pay. Right. Yeah. No, that's true too. And yeah. to Chris's point, no, you are true. gonna pay either way. Yeah. And the reality of the situation is, those programs are available for the people who are serious mm-hmm. and ready to take it to the next step. So you almost need that separator, right? Because people will waste your time. When we first started talking to couples. We'd sit down with couples individually. We'd have them over to our house for dinner and whatever. And we probably sat down with 30 couples. Mm. And out of those 30 couples, two of those couples maybe actually took action. Mm. The rest of the couples and people, I mean, people came to our house. We're ready to quit our job tomorrow, do real estate full time and be like, Six months later, they on crypto or they on whatever. Like they're jumping to whatever Mm -hmm. they think is going to be the lottery ticket. Mm -hmm. Right. And they don't really want it. And what I've found for me, um, I have one conversation. Right. And in that one conversation, my disclaimer is this. If at the end of this conversation, you don't do any of the things, we will never have another conversation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Truly, because I'm not going to invest the time in you. Right. Like if you came around to my projects. Even if you pay, if you came around my projects and then you don't do anything, right. I'm not going to waste my time because I'm pouring in a hole. I'm pouring in an empty bucket mm-hmm. like you. It right. just spills on the ground. Right. Like all this stuff is available. But the people who taught me, I also took action on every single one of those things. Right. Once again, I got to say, you guys make it look simple. It's hard. All it is. It. And, and mm-hmm. I just needed you guys to say that because well, when I'm seeing you on social media, yeah. I'm thinking I'm getting up tomorrow yeah. and I'm going to be worth about $15 million. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Is being broke hard too? Wow. I ain't actually yeah. did me like that. Yeah. We're so, we're so, <laughs> listen, I, I'm just we're supposed to be friends, man. I, I'm just, <laughs> right. I'm just, <laughs> nah, when, but you're, you're right. When you're my right. oldest daughter was born, I made $15,000 a year. And $150 was everything. I remember very vividly sending my ex-wife $150 and not eating for a week and a half. Mm. Because diapers and food in New Orleans was better than anything here. Yes, sir. I remember driving 10 hours to Wichita, Kansas after a double shift and wrecking my car because I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Because I just didn't have the money for a plane ticket. Mm-hmm. Or any kind of other transportation. And I couldn't wait to see my baby for one weekend. Mm-hmm. All these things are hard. You just pick your heart. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, mm-hmm. building a business is Y'all hard. I was doing some hip-hop quotable. <laughs> yeah, man. Pick your heart. I, so I should have Man, I should have been writing something. Like that. I hope y'all got y'all notebooks out there. These yeah. boys are going hard with these one-liners here. Mm-hmm. Now, but I say this. Of all these things, buying a house is the easiest part. Wow. Because... It's all hard. Paying rent is hard every month. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Right? Going to buy that foreign is hard every month. Mm -hmm. Like, that note come mighty regular. Mm -hmm. All these things come mighty regular. But if you own it, you got way more options than if you don't. Mm -hmm. In every civilization from Rosewood to Tulsa, even though, you know, that's the thing. (laughs) But 
all these civilizations were built on ownership. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it started off with, we live here, we gonna, if it's a shanty shack. You know, and I, I wanted to touch on your point earlier about we want to live in our final house or whatever. The reason people choose renting is I can go stay in the Galleria for 2100 a month. Right. And I got the nicest apartment. I got valet and whatever. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. But for, you know, the same 2100 I might be in the hood. Right. But you own it in the hood right. mm -hmm. versus you renting it, paying this Class right. A apartment building's rent. Mm -hmm. Which goes back to that, the financial education point. You know what I mean? A lot of times we would rather the appearance mm -hmm. versus having the, the substance of, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, uh, I think that's part of why we're doing this event is to try and help people understand and the sacrifice <laughs> and, and to the point of being hard, you know, and this is probably a societal thing, but when did we subscribe to the notion that this is going to be easy? And when you look at our culture, nothing's ever been easy for yes, us. Sir. So yeah. why all of a sudden do we view stuff <laughs> through the lens of, you know, going back to mentors and mentees? One of the things about mentoring people I had to understand with helping people is, see, I never focus on what the issues are. I focus on what my goal is. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's hard. Nothing's never been easy. Nothing I ever valued in life came to me easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I never had an expectation that this was just going to happen. That's why he didn't quit when 27, 26 banks said no. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He didn't. Ex mm -hmm. He wanted the first bank or two to say yes, mm -hmm. but his vision was bigger than the than the hardships that he had to endure mm -hmm. to bring it to pass. And okay. so I think you know we have to you know do whatever we have to do to anesthetize our community. In, from this concept of viewing stuff through, oh, man, this is difficult, that this is hard, or it costs. I always tell people, to do what we do, there's two things you got to agree that you're going to be fine <laughs> with. It's going to cost more, and it's going to take more than what you expect, and it's three things. It's going to cost more than you expect, it's going to take more than what you expect, and it's going to take longer than what you expect. If you can live with those three things, you'll be okay. If you can't live with those three things, not only will you not do this, you're probably not going to do anything else. Mm -hmm. and, and and also understanding sometimes when, when you're doing something, you are the first, mm -hmm. right? And because you are the first, the people who are coming behind you is going to uh, celebrate with you and 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 win because of you. Because mm -hmm. of Chris mm -hmm. being the first on Liberty Road right. and me seeing Chris, I was able to come and say, oh, he sold this for 284 All right, I'm going to build my product. So I was one of the first to build townhomes with no garage, mm -hmm. 1,500 square feet. The only reason why I took that, that, that calculated risk I ran the numbers, of course, but also I seen Chris <laughs> do it. So mm -hmm. I said, hey, Chris can do it. He was the first, and then he was the guinea pig, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> he, he, he was, because yeah. he was the one that's, to get people to come over here and say, okay, it's, a, it's cool to build in Fifth Ward on this side of Frenchtown. Mm -hmm. And he ran the play, and I came behind him. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chris, you never looked at that and like, hey, man, you biting my... My technique, my style, uh, my area, it, my da-da-da. It's, da. it's, it's the opposite. When I was trying to get into the new construction side of things, uh, there was a whole bunch of us wholesaling, a whole bunch of us flipping, and um, there was just so many rules why, or so many people tell me why we couldn't do this, or why I couldn't find anybody to help me. So now I'm like, I remember how frustrated I was when I was trying to figure it out, so I'm happy to be the person that everybody sees now doing it, giving them all the resources and everything, because it's, it's too much work out here for uh, just one person to take on, mm. you know, and we need more examples in our communities that are doing these things. So Absolutely. Right now, it's probably what, eight or nine black builders over there. Yeah. yeah. Not mean, only black builders, but a whole bunch of other builders. Yeah, you know, yeah, the trailblazer yeah. always takes <laughs> the arrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he made it look cool. Now there's everybody in that part of town where there was no one before he came there yeah. first, wow. to your point. What did you yeah. see? What was it about that area? you like, oh, I think that this is going to be something in the next five to ten years. That, that part, I'm um, just studying... City plans, I had a, uh, one of my old mentors tell me to follow where all the redevelopment was going in the city and just get ahead of it, be in front of it. And so, but in order to be in front of it, you got to be first, right? <laughs> so, so it's a big risk. So that means nobody sees the vision. Everybody just knows that as just being the hood for so long. Mm. So, um, yeah, that was that was my focus. And just also remembering what those neighborhoods used to be. Mm. Like before desegregation, right. those were very, very prominent neighborhoods. Driving neighborhoods. Mm. Founded by freed slaves. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. And we owned the whole community. We didn't need a firm for action. Ownership. We owned all the firms. Yes. <laughs> Mentorship, ownership, yeah. mm -hmm. proximity. Mm -hmm. Like all these things play into why, A, people owning homes is powerful, right? Because those communities aren't going to go down in value, mm -hmm. right? We experience that. And now they're the hottest thing since sliced bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Literally, the hood is a very fluid term these days, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like, and people have to understand that you might see trash in the streets and vagrants walking around, but look at that skyline. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Look at the proximity to the medical center. Right. Look at where the employment bases are. And look at the fact that 257 people move to Houston every, every day, day and they need mm -hmm. a place to go. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah. It's never going to get smaller than what it is now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm telling my first time home buyers that you want to invest in areas where the cats and dogs are walking themselves. <laughs> I love and that's it. true. That's no, I like true. that. Th- think yeah. about it. You hear that again. Most yeah. people can't see that. <laughs> Most people don't have that kind of vision, bro. Yeah. But yeah. You pull up to the stop stop sign and you see the dog and cats. They sometimes congregate in the middle of the street. You wait. <laughs> and they do their thing and move that's along. Good, Andre. But when you mm-hmm. think about it, those areas are progressing on a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a witness to it. We we bought a lot on this Charmette Street. It was full of cats and dogs. Mm-hmm. Right, you had cats and dogs in one corner, then you had the prostitutes on the other end, right? right? And then you had abandoned houses on that street. The, the first house, a first time home buyer bought his house for two seventy five. And I remember him talking to me. He's like, "Man, I don't know about the cats and dogs." I said, "This is normal. Before you know it, it's gonna be somebody behind those cats and dogs." <laughs> mm-hmm. Think about it. it. Mm-hmm. Right now, they're walking they walking themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. But I said, "Guarantee somebody's gonna be walking them behind a person." Mm-hmm. He bought his house for two seventy five. We sold the last house on that street, three hundred and forty thousand dollars, seven months. Mm-hmm. And guess what? The cats and dogs are still walking. They move further down, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? right? But that's why I'm telling my first time home buyers. And yeah. here's the thing, and this is what our community has to really understand: we're afraid of us. White people ain't afraid of wow. black folks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they move in our communities all day. Mm-hmm. And That's they a hectic know, comment. No, it's the truth. Man, it Think is. about it, it like this. When you go into a quote unquote bad community, it's you judging you, right? You're mm-hmm. going, hey, mm-hmm. ah, man, they standing out there on the corner. Oh, man, they whatever. When a white person sees that, when they walk up, they go, oh, this is opportunity. 100%. And, and they know when they call the cops, cops going to be there. If not, they're going to rain holy hell down on city This Hall. is so true. Right. Because yeah. you see these neighborhoods that you can go in <laughs> right here in the city, and you watch them slowly take it over mm-hmm. as they're out there jogging. And mm. you're like, man, a look what happened to the ago, Heights. Yeah. Right. No. You jogging. The no, Heights when I was a kid was the hood. Was the hood. <laughs> no, it was the barrio. I mean, it, it, it was it was the it barrio. Literally was, I, I went to Booker T. Washington High School. Literally. Graduated in 1992. I can tell it, you what the it, Heights looked like. And now all you can see is remnants, right? When mm. I was a kid, the Heights was like. Right. <laughs> Boy, now, now, I wanna, over yeah, there. Yeah, it's one of the most I, prestigious I, areas in the city. Yeah, I was, was going to tell that story because so y'all, y'all t- it's tying right in. Um, I forget who it was. Marlon or somebody flipped one of the first houses close to, close to TSU over there. One of his friends. They had an open house. 98% of the foot traffic was white. Mm. So he said he stopped one of the guys, one of the ladies towards the end. He's like, ma'am, I'm just curious. What brought you to this area? She said, oh, baby, I bought my house in the Heights. 20 years ago when it looked like this, I got $400,000 equity. I'm about to sell it and do the same thing. Uh, wow. And they ain't so, they, so what information do they have that gives them the insight oh, to know? So You understand what I'm saying? Because they, they obviously seen something that... They read the tea leaves of the city, <clears> right? <throat> mm-hmm. they, they read, hey... They're bringing jobs. They're reading the business journal every day. They're right. reading the Chronicle every morning. They're saying, oh, they're bringing 50,000 jobs, U of H growing and expanding their campus. Okay, cool. I need to be close to that. Mm-hmm. Downtown's building FOMO buildings. They plan on expanding 45. Okay, cool. I want to be close to that. I don't like driving this hour drive <coughs> to get to wherever. Okay, cool. I want to be close to that. <laughs> they're looking at the growth of the city and planning their dollars accordingly. Okay, so how can people that look like us start to understand how to start seeing what those people are seeing is there something is there something that you can help them to be able to be able to see those movements about to happen i'm gonna make it real simple go where your mama stay Bro. And buy that house mm. 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 because the black people who built this city oh, the y'all, black y'all boys spitting bars it's man. the truth we we did a house. We built a brand new house. Tyrone, uh, Tyrone. <laughs> the Tyrone. <house. laughs> Actually, we went to a restaurant. We had a house. We bought it to renovate. It fell down on itself. It hadn't been occupied in over 30 years. We designed the house on a napkin, and right. I built that house in its place. Mm-hmm. And literally, the lady next door had been in that community for 65 years. Wow. She was 98, 90. Six something and perfectly like lucid, whatever. Nice lady told us the entire story. She's like, Oh, such and such used to work for G and such and such used to work for Texas Instruments, and da da da. And all the stories of all the black professionals that had built the neighborhood. And she was so saddened by the fact that mm. what what it had become right. mm-hmm. when they worked their entire lives to do this, to build this thing mm-hmm. that was theirs for a time. 
And now she was just happy to see my black face building a house next door. And she was like, and you're doing a good job, too? <laughs> you you built something that actually looks good. Right. Yeah. And she just sit and tell us stories. But our community speak volumes. If the streets could talk, they'd tell our history. Right. It's not in any books. It's in the people. Right. So, so people that look like us day. need to stop being scared of us to be around people yeah. that look like us. Exactly. That point. Yeah. And go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, all I was going to say to piggyback off what um, Kevin just said, and I am so, you know, if you're not in Houston, like we're all from Houston, so it's easy. So one of the things I practice whenever I go to a new city and so I, I land, I get in my car and I go down to their downtown. And then I, I drive all around their downtown till I find the worst looking part of the periphery of downtown. Mm -hmm. And then I drive that community till I find what they call that line of demarcation. Yep. It's a street, it's a track, Railroad. it's something that you cross. And then all of a sudden you see uh, oh, uh, power lines, and dogs you see walking streets. Them you see, right? <laughs> and then I go back to that worst part of the area and then I start looking for the opportunities there. So I tell people quite simply, go find the worst community closest to the epicenter of the city. Wow. And that's where you buy. Yeah, wow. where, where you start, where you, where you see a little bit of activity starting. The first couple of houses being renovated, the people moving into them. Then you know that area is slowly demand is growing in that area. And then um, the, the easy thing I tell people to do is just type in the name of the city you in. Type in urban planning, uh, housing and zoning, something like that. It's gonna pull up somewhere on their website where it says where their five, ten, fifteen year plans are. When you see something in that plan that overlaps with something you see in the community. Then if, if they're fixing the streets, if they're fixing the sidewalks, you know the area is coming. The mm -hmm. city is trying to get people to come to that area. And these folks got plans. Okay, that was game right there. That's mm -hmm. the mentor talk right there. Yeah. You just mm -hmm. gave that one. These mm -hmm. folks got big plans. Mm -hmm. The city has 30-year <laughs> plans. Mm -hmm. Here's a, I'll tell two stories. In Missouri City, we were buying a parcel that the city ultimately eminent domained and had to buy us out of our contract on. Mm. They had plans on that parcel. It's 2023 since 1970. Before wow. the people we bought it from had ever bought it. Mm -hmm. They knew what they wanted there that far back. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, yeah, that's supposed to be a park. I said, hold on. What, what you mean? It's a it was owned by a school. It was owned by HSD. No, no, no. <laughs> we determined that that was going to be a park in 1970 in our city planning meeting. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and people think I'm a genius for what we did in <laughs> South Union. No, I worked in the medical center for seven years. Right. Mm -hmm. I went in an office in MD Anderson and they had all of the city on a map. And they had buildings on a big table with models of exactly where the medical center was expanding. They said, oh, yeah, this medical center east. Hold on. You mean right there by the Shipley's? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's medical center right. east. Mm -hmm. It ain't called it that right now. There. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, it will be, though. Right. Mm -hmm. And they showed on a map, we expanded west here. We expanded east here. We're going to Austin here. We're... Okay, I just need to follow the plan because they got a plan for the city. Mm -hmm. All this city is somebody's decision. Every single street, yes, sir. Every single uh, sidewalk, somebody thought of it, right? It's just, are you determining what the future of your neighborhoods look like? Because we are every day. We're choosing. I built a block. He built a block. He building a block. Mm -hmm. Literally, we're determining. Hey, twenty years from now. This is going to be what I said for it to be because I chose for it to be. I got a whole community that looked like I drew on paper. Mm -hmm. And every single house being built there now follows my model. It'll be over 100 homes that all look like the houses that I decided. Yes, sir. Yeah. And the whole city's like that. And, and I say this, too. Um, you know, we talk about the five people you're closest to is usually how you're, 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 you're mentally molded. Well, now it could be the five people you follow most on social media. Ah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so so okay. they follow, if they're following us. And Another bar. <laughs> you know, if they're following us in Houston, they, they know where they should be going. Um, so quit following uh, Big Booty Julie. <laughs> right. Maybe follow right. some of this stuff right here so yeah, you can get, get, get your fit in your life. Locked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buy you a house so you can Shade get your room. own yeah. Big Booty yeah. Julie. Yeah, how about that? How about that? How about that? Yeah. How about that? So as we wrap, uh, and I appreciate you guys' time so much. And I mean, fun. I'm mm -hmm. excited for the conversation for the event and to share this information live and in person for people to be able to answer their questions and things like that here. And we're <laughs> expecting over 500 people. So that but, is exciting. A couple of things you got to mention, though, because you, you were black men. I don't want to say exclusive, but your thought pattern was I want black men I want a room building, full of black men yeah. to educate them on this process yeah. because I don't feel like they're getting the education or they're not comfortable taking this step to home ownership. And I think that they should be. And here's the <laughs> coldest part about that. You know who's the first to chime in? The sisters. 
they were like, hold on, we ready to buy a house right now. So that right. shows the disparity <laughs> in our thinking, right? right? So the black men, we got to convince and cajole. The women coming just because they coming. Right. Mm-hmm. So Support. what mm-hmm. I wanted to see was a sea of black faces, mm-hmm. yes. sea of black men learning this is what buying a home and owning a home will do for me today. Mm-hmm. Not tomorrow, not next year, 10 years from now. If I can get off this $1,500 rent and start paying a $1,500 mortgage, I'm going to win. Yes, and I'll be able to make better decisions for the future of my family, for the future of my legacy, my household, my pocketbook. I'll have better choices. And yes, the roof comes and the toilet. Some got times got to be switched out and whatever. But you can learn all that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And we can teach you. The Internet can teach you. YouTube University can teach you how to do 99 percent of the things that takes to maintain a house. But if you own it, you can always rent it out. And you can make long-term decisions, and that's the power of it. But Really, that should be the end. But I have to ask you this. This is my last question for you. And, man, I, I just so much love being here with you guys. Let me just say that. I feel like my pockets just got fatter. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's all in my head, but something just made me, some of it's going to spill over on me, and yeah. I'm going to do some great things. But you having this idea did come at a cost. And that yeah. cost is that there were some people that – well, they were not friendly to the idea of you doing something that was specifically designed to increase the mindset of black men. You know, the interesting part about and that I had is, to mention that I'm I not did. a so y'all all my actual friends in real life. Y'all know I'm not a social media cat like that. Like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't care. I have never experienced the <laughs> level of vitriol and hate mm-hmm. until we posted that flyer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just the title alone, the com- and I mean, some of the comments were like wild. And I, I got so tired of, I used to have to wake up every morning, maybe delete 30, 40 comments. Or, and I got tired of it. I just let them fly. But it was white men can buy houses too. Y'all dusty black folks trying to be blah, blah, blah. Like, and I mean, it even worse than that, I won't even say it on the yes. podcast, mm-hmm. but the pure hate alone of... Y'all are doing this and breaking this thing that we want to be in place, mm-hmm. right? We don't want y'all buying homes. That was the damn problem in Rosewood and all these other mm-hmm. communities. Y'all having access to information. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you said that. I didn't men. think you were going to actually say that. Why? Mm-hmm. It's kind of controversial to, to acknowledge that those people were mad, not because you're going to educate people who look like you, who could in turn become People who do what you guys are doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it seems threatening. It does. And we don't want you doing that. Okay, a couple of you guys got successful. Hurrah. The rest of these guys, we don't want everybody in Fifth Ward mm-hmm. awarded with this information so they can then go back and do what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So I'm surprised. I didn't know that you was going to be so frank. So oh, I should I should have known I'm that, generally but, frank. Yes, but you I'll, are. I'll, I'll <laughs> say this. <clears throat> My goal. If if the same twenty percent of that room, right, absolutely, can buy a home, which is a hundred mm-hmm. men, a mm-hmm. hundred black men go buy one more house. Awesome. Mm-hmm. You know the economic impact to our community mm-hmm. in the city. Mm-hmm. Now let five hundred do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they gonna say, look. <laughs> y'all might have to <laughs> buy. <laughs> look, look, look. Might be Everybody excited. started getting excited. That's I keep good. that thing. Go ahead. But <laughs> I'm just saying that's power. Yes, sir. That's choice. And let it buy it in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. What would Fifth Ward look like if 500 black owners Mm -hmm. show up? Mm -hmm. What would Third Ward look like? What would South Union look like? Because we got the money. It's not a money thing. We're Mm -hmm. not priced out of the market. Mm -hmm. We don't buy in the market. Mm -hmm. Right. We buy other things. It's just choices. We buy the I needed that big body beans, though. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... (laughs) We need to buy a Hyundai. They real nice now. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's right. They very nice now. Gen- we need Genesis? to buy a Kia. Yeah. 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 We need to buy a Honda Accord so that we can have more choice later. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Because it's not about now, right? When I was coming up and my family landscaped in River Oaks for over 80 years, the people who really had the money didn't have a night. They drove uh, like a literally plain Jane Tahoe. Now, it had all the features or whatever. So what was success for me? I bought a plain Jane Tahoe. Because the billionaires that I grew up looking at in River Oaks, they drove a plain Jane Tahoe. He got a den in it, too. <laughs> that boy yeah. real about his. Mm-hmm. He's spending, his money is in the right place. Yeah. No, he let you know he lived this life. It's not, he's not talking about it. I just, want, I just had to say that. Look <laughs> at me and ask yourself, 
could I fix the front dent in my car for like thousand dollars? Sure. <laughs> I'm going to spend $1,000 this afternoon. I, actually, I'm spending way more than that this afternoon. But the reality of it is, that's not my priority. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy a million dollars worth of dirt. I'm working on the next, like, 20-acre mm -hmm. plot yeah. or whatever. I don't... Car don't matter to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A house. In a, one house don't necessarily matter to me. Now, I don't even see them. We building 12 right now. I don't even necessarily, like, go to them like that. Mm. What I know is the power economically on a single person basis, if one more person buys one more house and we do that at scale, it changes the table. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the table's got it. That's change. powerful, man. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about the numbers like that, yeah. man. It's, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad that you really broke it down. I hope somebody heard that. So I'm not even, I ain't even thinking about those other 400 now. I'm thinking about if I can get 100 in there mm -hmm. that are ready to make that move. Man, that if is we incredibly get one, it powerful. changes one family. Absolutely, mm -hmm. man. One hundred percent. I appreciate what y'all doing because y'all really are giving up game. You don't have to. You don't have to do it on social media or none of that. But you are giving up a lot of game. And some of the stuff y'all talk about, I will be honest, it sounds scary to me. Mm -hmm. I'm a very passive buyer. It's all accidental for me. I know y'all laughing at me and say you whatever got you six want. Up, no, mm -hmm. that's Listen, paid off. It's six all yeah. It's, yeah. it's accidental. But you guys are doing this. What I would call at scale. And the information that you're going to give to people will be invaluable. And even if somebody comes and they only get one home for themselves, mm -hmm. like you said, those 100, it changes so many. So I appreciate you even having the the audacity, some, might, some might say, to even do something like this and get men in that building that walk out of there that feel rejuvenated and that they can actually have a home. So I, I just really wanted to salute you guys because you could be selfish. And you can just get you, keep getting Benzes or Bentleys or whatever y'all got, a million-dollar home, and not want to give the game to anybody and be selfish, but you're not. And I, I, I personally appreciate it, man. So I love being around y'all, just hearing y'all talk. I'm like, oh, man. I know I just made some money. I'm not really sure how, <laughs> but I know this conversation. Just, <laughs> I know this conversation just grew me in some way. And yeah. and, and we would be remiss, uh, Mr. Shelton, if you didn't give them all the details, if they need to follow you on something, how they can register for the event, et cetera, et cetera. Because I know everybody is not, you know, has not signed up yet and they still have an opportunity to be there. Yes. Sorry. I'm Actually, my day job was texting. <laughs> but no. Um, so Black Men Buy Houses, the event is available on Eventbrite. Uh, the tickets are free. We're not charging for this event. And I know wow. people who pay, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want a $20 ticket to be the barrier for information that could change people's lives. Mm. So for me, I always thought of this as a free event. So please go register, get your ticket while it, they're still available. We got over 500 people. We had to expand the capacity. Wow. Yeah, that's just so we We had to get them to, to let us have more seats. So uh, I am so thankful for each and every one of y'all, uh, plus my wife, who's not here, but for 100%. being a part of this, Ms. for believing Jones, in this crazy idea of seeing a bunch of black men in a room uh, and talking about houses, which I know we're all passionate mm -hmm. about, but there's very few conversations that get to extend to that big of a group, mm -hmm. especially folks who otherwise, unless they see us do it, because mm -hmm. representation matters, mm -hmm. they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes a difference hearing it from each and every one of you that they can buy a house, yes, that they should buy a house, that it's valuable to them, that it would make a difference in their lives. And I think at the end of the day, um, will make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, one, I want to commend you and Aisha for <coughs> coordinating and putting this event together, uh, echoing uh, Matt Hatter's sentiments. Um, one of a statement I'm very fond of, it says, one person with courage is a majority. And I think this event represents that. And I just want to say this to all the people that will watch this uh, in advance of the event. Uh, any young black man that you know um, that may not be privy to this um, event <coughs> and or information, we ask that you share it with them and bring them out as well because we definitely want to have as many people in this event uh, to be impacted with this information. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Go ahead. And, and uh, for me, I just want to encourage the people to come out and just a reminder, what's done in the dark shall come to light. So all the hard work and dedication you have put in thus far, and it seemed like no one has noticed it. It seemed like you got that credit score up to 580 and you almost to that... Well, is 580 good to buy a house now? FHA? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let's do 550 then. Do you got your credit? <laughs> <laughs> 
You got your credit score at 550. He trying to get up to that 580. Remember, what's done in the dark shall come to light. Continue to pay off, right? Continue to work on your credit because in, in due season, you shall have light and your light is your first home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yep. that boy spitting balls yeah. over there, boy. I, guess I don't know if you, I don't know if you practice these lines. <laughs> we, I ain't know we supposed to come with practice lines already, but all right, all right. <laughs> you can always tell Andre gets this, like, glazing yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't know that. He didn't go in. He didn't go in. He made a face. Yeah, I'll, I'll say we can close it out. Um, when you come to this event, don't think you're walking out by yourself. You're walking out with a whole network of new people that's in your circle that can help you. Whatever questions you have, there'll be somebody in the room that can help you answer that question, help you get to the next days, help you get to that closing table eventually so you can you can become a homeowner. All right. Man, All this right. is your show. Uh, <clears throat> I, 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 no, no, I, listen, when I started when I started doing I was the one that asked to do this. And then it turned into Kevin's show. I'm like, you know what? Okay, yeah, but th- but this is cool. And I'm like, I know I was asking questions, but I just again I feel like the guy out of pocket here, the the previous DJ that's really I just feel lucky. I know this sounds crazy to y'all. I don't care. I just really feel lucky to be in the room with so many accomplished young brothers. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting to see. It's exciting the event that you're putting on. To me, it really, really is. And, you know, because of the pandemic um, and social media, we got a chance to see a lot of you brothers doing things like like I didn't even know this cat lived in Houston at first. I just saw him. On, <laughs> I didn't. I just saw him on social media. And then because somebody I work with mm-hmm. said your name, I was confused. I'm like, I'm thinking he live in Philly. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but it's amazing that you got so many accomplished brothers right here in the city doing big things. And we need to know that they are here doing big things, not just rapping or singing and anything like that. And I, I love all that in playing sports, but we need to see brothers doing other things, making a ton of money that you can be something different. And so when they see that and they see you right here and you're from Fifth Ward and you from Third Ward and they see that, they're like, he's from Third Ward. I know he, him. I know I can too. So I, I just appreciate y'all. And I'm not closing out, Kevin. This is your thing today. Yeah. And I'm not every coming. time you got the opportunity to close it out, just close it out. <laughs> just give them all the information one more time. Y'all need to be there. That's the bottom line. Event y'all need bright, to be there, man. Black Men by Homes, Marriage and Real Estate Podcast, all these amazing gentlemen who the happen date. to be my friends. So you know. Oh, I apologize. September 30th from 12 to 3. Uh, at the Power Center, formerly our formerly Power Center Community Collective, and uh, that is a black owned yeah. building. Yes, yeah. yes, so it is. we are we are black on black in this thing, uh, <laughs> and we are going to make sure that we give not only the gems and the information, but the resources in the mm-hmm. room. Mm-hmm. So please come out, uh, show up. I know free events, people don't show up. You want to be in this room. Yeah, if yeah. you are not in this room, what you're losing is for your future. We Ooh. got houses. Ooh, like, yeah. we, like, Ooh. we ain't asking about it for nothing. Like, when I picked don't up spit the phone, no nasty ball well, in well, like that, well, man. Well, I ain't spit asked about it put ball. in. I was like, hey, we'll pay for it. Wait, what? This is for you. Mm-hmm. I own plenty. They own plenty. We don't have to ask you. We are here to provide information to help you get to your next stop. So as a community, we go forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is the Marriage and Real Estate Podcast. Follow us, social media, all that good jazz. Put it in the show notes because I don't do all that. What I do is build houses. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Bye.